we've got one minute here. And then we'll get started. We got Basil saying hello. So Just want to start right on time. All right. Welcome back to the Courtney's Notes version. Health matters simplified, so you can understand. Here we are after golf, and I'm feeling some back pain here and i'm feeling some some tingling that's coming down my leg into my foot and so this is my normal routine here that we're going to do well i say my normal routine the routine kind of varies just depending hey luna the routine varies depending on exactly how badly i'm hurting and where i'm hurting uh, you can see that i'm wearing my golf costume i like to have a wide brimmed hat to keep the sun off so take that off here and then because of the back surgeries i wear back supports when i'm golfing also so i've got two back supports that i wear and you might be thinking man it was almost 100 degrees out there today you're wearing all that stuff well i've learned that wearing this really makes me feel the most comfortable so i've got an undershirt and then i've got the back supports and then I've got a long sleeve, light colored shirt. The light color is going to repel the sun. And I love it. This is the sunblock that you don't have to reapply. Um, I do have a t-shirt on under this. So I think I'm going to take this off to be a little cooler. It is hot. So we'll just be a little bit cooler here. There we go. It's okay. All right. So also it was really hot today out on the golf course. So I made sure that I drank quite a bit of water and had some electrolytes. And so laying flat on my back, like I normally do for the lower back exercises is not really something that's going to be reasonable right now. So we're going to start out like we always do with some motion. Then we're going to do a little bit of stretching and then I'll ice it after the live show is done. So thank you for joining us here. Welcome to the Corny's Notes version. This is Health Matters Simplified, so you can understand. And we're working today on helping the lower back pain to settle down. I have a history of ruptured discs. And so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with some motion. Because my stomach is a little bit full, that's why we're starting today in the quadruped position. And we're just gonna start with a little bit of motion. Right now, I'm feeling like these are a modified wag the tail is what's feeling the best. Put that shirt in, maybe it will help so that you can see a little bit better. All right, perfect. So we start by doing some pelvic curls. This one here is called the cat cow or the cat camel. We always called it the cat camel, but I've seen a lot of places are calling it the cat cow. I love this exercise because it's a full spine motion exercise. And as we remember, we always want to do that motion first. And now today I'm feeling like a, a child's pose should be next. Feeling that now stretch into my shoulders, into my back. Oh. Feeling good. Anytime we do a stretch, we're typically going to hold that for about 10 to 15 seconds. These are called hip circles. Really trying to get things moving in the lower back first. And then I think I better stretch into my legs here a little bit. So you may or may not have heard of the pigeon pose in yoga. This is kind of where 
this develops from. And what we're going to do is stretch the external hip rotators, so the hip on the front, and we're going to stretch the psoas here on the back. And so we start with our legs, like two check marks. So I've got a check mark here, and I've got a check mark here. And then our pelvis right now is facing straight ahead, and we're going to turn, and I'm pushing down with my right hand oh, as I turn. And now I'm feeling that starting to stretch in my right hip and also in my back. And then I like to support the opposite knee and the opposite leg. And then I just turn back. And so I'm getting rotation here in my spine while I'm stretching my hips and legs just a little bit. I love this stretch. Oh, this is a really good stretch. And so we go slowly through that, rocking back and forth. And as it loosens up, I'm going to slowly move my front leg forward just a little bit. I'm going to move my back leg back a little bit, and I'm going to turn so that I'm really stretching the external hip rotators on the front, so piriformis, obturator internus, inferior and superior gemellus on the front. And now I'm really onto the quads and a little bit of psoas still here on the back, adding just a little bit of rotation and I'm feeling loose from golf. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, oh uh, yes. And I'm feeling a really good stretch on that left quad and on my right external hip rotators. Oh man, that feels really good. And then coming out of that. And let's do the same thing the other way. So we start again with our check marks. And whatever we do on one side, we always want to do on the other side about the same amount so that we feel balanced. And so starting the same way, I'm getting a little bit of a stretch here in my psoas. I'm getting a little bit of a stretch on my left external hip rotators. And then I'm rotating my spine so that I'm really turning it 90 degrees. I'm facing right now straight towards the camera. And then I'm turning 90 degrees towards the forward leg and rocking that pelvis back. As I rock it back, I feel it kind of actually pulling up into the knee a little bit. And then as I rock it forward, then I'm feeling it down into the psoas. The psoas is your main hip flexor. And the psoas is a really important muscle to be stretching anytime we're having back pain. Does anybody know why? Well, we want to stretch the psoas because the psoas has an origin on your spine. You're thinking, what? How does that work? You're telling me that the muscle in my hip, in my leg here, actually attaches to my spine? That's correct. Here, let me show you quickly how that works. If you think about it, it makes sense. What's the, the job of the psoas? That's your hip flexor. And so if we're going to flex the hip, we have to attach somewhere on the body above the hip. And so where it attaches is actually in the anterior region or the front of the lumbar spine and then down into the leg. And then that's how it can act as a hip flexor. And so if we look here, at the spine, yeah, there we go. We can see the lumbar region here. Sorry, turn it just a little bit. We can see the lumbar region here. That's where it attaches and then down here into the leg. And so it really does make a big difference. If this muscle here is tight, then that's going to pull that lumbar spine forward and then that's going to impinge on the nerves here so it's really important to stretch your psoas and i especially like to stretch mine after golf so i'm just going to do that one a little bit more so it's balanced with the other side stretching here the psoas or the hip flexor on the right leg and the external hip rotators piriformis and family on the the left side there. And it feels really good. 
and I'm holding just to that point where it's feeling good. And we're going to do this just like we did with the other side. So as I roll forward, then I can reach back so that I can also stretch the front of that leg. Trying to make sure that I stay on the table. Usually I do these on the floor, but I was trying to get this set up here so that we could do the live stream. There we go. That'd probably be pretty funny if I fell off the table, but I would prefer not to. Hi, <laughs> Basil. Is that your ball? Yeah. Let me hold it just a little bit longer. Oh, I love that stretch. That stretch feels so good. Basil's here. Want to play a little bit. All right, so I want to do each of those again. Remember when we're stretching, we usually do sets of three to five repetitions. And this is no exception. We really want to loosen this up. So if you're following along here at home, it looks like. We do have some people there that are watching, so this is really good. Uh, welcome. I'm glad that you joined the live stream. This is a an after golf cool down where I really was having some pain in my back and some symptoms radiating down into my leg, and so this is what we're doing to get this to settle down. Oh, that feels good. And if there's any questions that anybody has, you can just enter those into the text box. I'll be glad to answer any questions. You can see I'm doing a little bit of flexion here and extension with my foot while I'm holding that. Just trying to listen to my body and do what feels good. Anytime we're doing movement, it's gonna get that blood flowing. And anytime we get that blood flowing, that's going to help to rinse out the toxins. And it's going to help us feel better. It's like we've got a ball here. All right, which way? This way. So we're doing this way one more time. What do you think, Luna? You're doing a good job, too. Luna's laying right here beside me. The comment that I often get from patients is, oh, I can't do my exercises because my dog is bothering me. You can see here that it's actually possible that you can do both at the same time. Wait, Basil. Whoops. All right. We can stretch and we can throw the ball. And that's really one of those secrets when you can take when you can take those things in your life that are aggravating your symptoms that are your exacerbating factors and you can turn those into your rehabilitation that's when you get better the fastest. And so often well, why am I saying that often because throwing the ball for the dog or for your dog that often is an exacerbating factor for people there the dog's pulling on the leash or the dog is not uh, picking the ball up and giving it to them. So they have to bend forward, bending down to the ground to get the ball can put a huge stress in your lower back. And so I, I don't do that. I make sure the dogs have to give the ball to me. They know that mostly I'm not going to reach down to the ground to get those balls. All right, so we've stretched the external hip rotators on both sides. We've stretched the psoas on both sides. I know I've only done twice in each direction, but it's feeling a little bit loose. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is to stretch the hamstrings. We're doing a lot of legs because the legs are really a big part of what's going on with the golf swing. I can see here that it's a little bit difficult to see, but... When you're stretching the hamstring here, you're pointing the toe back, keeping your spine straight, and then leaning towards the toe. You can see I can touch mine there with that hand, but it's not important to touch the toe because it's a stretch for the legs. Hold it 10 to 15 seconds. 
and I like to go back and forth from site to site. Different, different sources or different people are doing different things. But for me here, I feel that it's important that you're going to keep your spine straight, that you're going to get your legs straight, and then bring your point your toe back. That's a good sign of flexibility here that we can see that. See how it's an acute angle there at the ankle? I feel like I'm going to have to work a little bit more on my lighting and my background. What do you think, Luna? You're wondering who I'm talking to. All right, we want to do that one three times each way. So let's do this one again. And I should really be counting 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that was 15 seconds. That's long enough. If you've watched any of my other stuff, you know that I'm a big uh, supporter of doing less than 15 seconds too. Sometimes if you want to hold it 10 seconds or especially if you're, if you're still under the age of about, I don't know, 15 or 16, you really don't have to hold the stretch as long because your, your muscles are already very long and flexible. But as we get older, there's a tendency for everything to want to shorten scar tissue shrinks and, and muscles <laughs> want to tighten up and shorten. I don't know what the dog's barking at, but that is okay. So after stretching my legs like that, now I'm feeling like my back is hurting a little bit more again, basically back like to where it started. So I want to go back to some motion for the lower back and the fluids are settling. I want to let those fluids settle, you know, 20 minutes usually before you're laying on your back. A lot of people, talk and complain about well what do we call it we call it heartburn but we know heartburn is usually what GERD gastroesophageal reflux disorder and what is that that is when it's really when the stomach acid is splashing back onto your lower esophageal sphincter and so basically you take your food you put it in your mouth the food goes down into your stomach and then from the stomach it's going to slowly go down into the intestines first into the duodenum and down through there and so when that stomach is full those contents are splashing back up against that little valve. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter. And that little valve is trying to keep that acid from splashing back. Well, the stomach is supposed to be highly acidic and that acid is in there to help your body to properly process the food as it's coming in. The, a lot of the enzymes and things that act in the stomach, they need that high acid level. And so taking an acid is actually going to decrease the stomach acid. And then that's going to have a tendency to, to actually make the problem a little bit worse. And so a big thing that you can do to help to prevent this problem is not laying down right after you eat. So don't lay down when your stomach is full. If you're laying down on a full stomach, then that's going to cause that stomach acid to sl splash back causing that gastroesophageal reflux. So let's see where we're going to go next. <laughs> Let me give me a little bit of space here. Let me go. It's almost been 20 minutes. So I do want to lay down here very shortly. So let's go to this next part. I'm going to take my glasses off. All right. So now that we've stretched things out just a little bit, now we're laying on our back and we're going to start with that single knee to chest. Just taking our knee and pulling it up towards the chest. You want to hold that for as long as it feels good, up to 15 seconds. Basil, you got to hand me the ball. You can't drop it on the floor. And again, I like to alternate sides. That's feeling really good. 
And so I'm gonna go into the twist stretch. The twist stretch or the spinal twist stretch is one of my absolute favorites. So now we're using the leg to twist the lower back, holding that 10 to 15 seconds. <laughs> Basil, I can't reach down to the ground. You gotta hand it to me. Oh, in the other way. And this one's really getting it. This is where that pain radiates down the leg from the disc injuries that I've had in the past. Oh, that stretch feels good. And back the other way. Here, Basil, right here. You got to hand it to me. And hold. And then the other way. All right. Next, we're going to get into the hip just a little bit more. With the piriformis stretch or the hip stretch. Those of you that have seen the lower back pain getting started, I think I did this one on the other one too. But if you've seen my other videos, you'll know this stretch. I love this stretch. It's another way to get into those external hip rotators. If it's not really clear what I'm doing, just go to those other videos and check it out. We had a hot day here in Memphis today, so it's, it's been a bit of a challenge staying hydrated. Here you are, Basil, right here. There it is. Oh. Getting a good stretch. And those are my favorites. That spinal twist stretch is really good. You got to make sure you're breathing while you're doing all of this. When you're breathing, your body's exchanging the oxygen, pulling out carbon dioxide and toxins. With golf, too, we want to remember to stretch our arms. So right now I'm doing some pelvic rolls and then stretching the arm at the same time. It's good when we can do more than one thing at the same time, then we get stuff done a little more efficiently. And that's really what we're trying to do here. Get things to settle down so that we can have a good night's rest. I really do feel like some bridges are going to help today. So I'm going to start with a supported bridge. And that's where, because I'm hurting, I want the muscles to engage. Because I feel like it's going to feel good for those muscles to engage and move some of that blood out of there. But I don't want them to have to do all the work. So I'm going to use my hands kind of like a shelf to hold my hips up at first. And then as I'm feeling confident in holding it up, then I'll let the hands drop and just hold that bridge. Ultimately, this is one of the most important exercises for people that are having back pain because it's a simple isometric strengthening exercise that you can do for your lower back. It's very simple. You just lay on your back, feet underneath of your knees, and then lift your hips up so that your knee your hip and your shoulder are in a straight line. You really want to hold that for 10 seconds, about 10 times. And that's going to be a really good exercise to strengthen that lower back. When you're hurting though, you don't have to do the full 10 repetitions. You can see I'm doing some motion in between. Remember that motion is lotion for the spine. And so we always keep going back to motion. We move it, then we stretch it, and then we strengthen it. And that's what we're doing now. We're into, well, going back and forth between motion and strength. It's feeling tender. And, and then when we're in that bridge, that feels good right now on the bridge. That's not hurting. 
So that's good. And I like the bridge because it's isometric. And that means that we're not moving, but we're strengthening and we're holding in that position. Especially if you have a lot of bone spurs in there, too much motion with the bone spurs. And then the spurs start to, to tear some of that soft tissue. So when we do our strengthening, often we're doing that isometric strengthening also because those are stabilizing muscles. So the isometric strengthening is really good for it. And back to motion. Now, to really feel good, I think I need to do the stretches in the legs one more time. And then I'm going to go and lay on the ice pack. How are we doing? Yeah, we're 25 minutes. So this is really uh, good. We're going to do about five more minutes here of stretching. And then should be feeling pretty good. Let me just take a quick look. Has anybody put any... All right, looks like we're good for comments. Again, if you have any questions, you can type them into the comment box there, and I'll check periodically throughout the live shows. This is only my second live show. The one that I did earlier today, the lighting was really bad. This one, I think we've got quite a bit better. But what I really bring here is showing you how even with ruptured discs and surgery and pain, you can still do the things that you want to do. Sometimes you'll just need to, to do some things to, to make that possible. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're making it possible with these stretches. Oh, it feels good. And when you're doing the stretches correctly, it should feel better when you finish. Often I get patients that come in and they say, oh, doc, I haven't been able to do my exercises. You know, that stuff that you showed me, I haven't been able to do it because it hurts too bad. And then I think, man, I must not have shown them the exercises right because when I do them, it feels better. And so I want to do them because that's how I feel better. We all want to feel better. Right, Basil? Good catch. Stretch this here a little bit more. And here we are. Back to this one here. In golf, there's a lot of rotation. So we're doing quite a bit of rotational stretching here. And that's the rotation is how you want. You see, I keep turning my upper body one way and then the other way, getting the rotation in the spine, getting really getting into those hips. Oh, man, it feels good. And it has really settled down. My lower back now is feeling significantly better than it was i'm still feeling some of that radiculopathy down in that leg and so that's again where the ice pack is really going to come in and help but this is my post golf cool down now we get that back you know loosened up and get that blood flowing so that the next day is going to go really well We want to be able to sleep well tonight. This twist stretch is my favorite. So I like to always, well, almost always end with this one. Of course, going both ways. Oh, yeah. That's the spot. All right, now we're going to get up properly. Remember, I've got another video that shows how to get up from lying down. 
And when we do that, we're going to roll on our side. We're going to brace with our stomach muscles. We're going to push with our top hand, pushing down, letting the legs swing off to the side. And that is that. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Courtney's Notes version, Health Matters Simplified, so you can understand. If you really like our content and you feel like this information is helping you and you want to help support us, please subscribe to the channel and like, and you can share this stuff too. Let people know that they can feel better at home just doing some simple things. So thank you for watching the Courtney's Notes version. And remember, get adjusted because it feels good. Thank you for watching.